Hi guys, welcome back. Let's wrap up the TaxMaker application by introducing the Android Job Scheduler, uh, which was uh, actually introduced in API 21 Lollipop. In this context, we'll be using the Job Scheduler to clean up the completed tax, uh, which will actually interact with the content provider. So it's actually going to be doing some cleanup for us. So this is how we're going to actually go about it. You create a new class called the cleanup job service right there in the data package. This extends the job service as you see right there. And um, we're going to actually have the field which you could say the tag uh, that's for uh, actually speeding out to the console or to the log. and uh, you have to override few methods. You override the on start job and the on stop job. Uh, so in the on start job, that's where your work is. You know, you are already triggering the job uh, tax. And the on stop job, uh, you might need to actually reschedule any jobs that didn't uh, complete. So cool. Right there in the on start job, it takes one parameter, which is the job parameters, and uh, with the params. And uh, you could actually run a background uh, call. You know, you could interact with uh, the the internet, or you could interact with uh, the content provider right there in the background. So you could uh, trigger a background tax where you actually uh, extend the async tax. So cool. Now we're going to actually extend the async tax, and we'll run a background uh, trade during the course of starting this job. We have a cleanup tax class that's an inner class that undo the access to the database on the background thread, as I've said earlier, and we execute that right there in the onstart job. Let's get to see this class. This is an inner class which we have right there, which extends the async tax and takes the job parameters, uh, the void, and the job parameters as, a, as the uh, generic parameters, which will be going right there into the async tax. Once you declare an exit tax, you need to override the doing background method and the post execute method. In the doing background method, that's when the real tax has been carried out. Uh, we're going to actually get the string where, which is right there in the tax column, and we are checking for it's complete. Any tax that is completed, that's what we are actually targeting. And uh, the argument will be one, so we actually want to pick up one one of it and uh, you have the count which is actually an integer and this time it's going to uh, get the content resolver now we are communicating with the content provider with the resolver and we trigger the delete method and the delete method you pass in the content URI the where clause and also its uh, arguments which is uh, one uh, the one uh, column and the where is where the complete column so you understand how that flows now we want to delete the completed tax right there in the doing background you could log that to actually get that uh, settled or show you that right there in the log and you return the params which is actually going to take in the zero index cool and it all post execute after uh, the doing background might have run so you actually going to notify that the work is now done so you call the job finished and uh, you pass in the job parameters and also a uh, false so that's actually going to uh, notify and register that the job has been carried out if not it's going to actually restart you could actually reschedule the job in the stop job that is if it returns the parameters to be true that's the job is not finished cool so we have that settled in the cleanup tax which extends the syntax and inner class that handles the access to the database on the background thread uh, which is actually going to trigger on start of the job and on on stop job uh, if that's then finished you could reschedule the job so you have that set up in the cleanup job service now are you going to actually uh, set up further parameters to this or what are the attributes that you set uh, which is right there with the job scheduler 
based on this probably when you probably if you want some lat latency uh, the time span how many hours do you need the job to keep running uh, do, do the job needs uh, an internet service uh, or it needs a Wi-Fi so those are different attributes you could set uh, when you're carrying out the jobs we're actually going to do that in the tax provider you have that right in the provider which we'll quickly look rather we have a method called manage the cleanup job over here this initiates a periodic job to clear out completed items as we all know right from the cleanup job service this is where we interact with the job scheduler we have the job scheduler being uh, declared and you have an object uh, you get the context you get the system service and uh, the context here is the job scheduler service which is actually an integer that you might have declared up there okay you're going to declare the cleanup cleanup job id over here we get to look at this id how it's being used right there in the method now you run the job approximately every one hour so that's it so you could actually have a span probably every five five hours please uh, complete this tax for me upload some of this data from the content provider down to the cloud or delete some of this uh, data after 24 hours so you could actually specify uh, the time you want the job to trigger you have the job service and uh, you have a component name and this is where you are actually going to interact with the cleanup job service class so because uh, you have to uh, interact with that to trigger and now the tax in question from the job info class of the job scheduler and uh, that takes up the cleanup the cleanup job id so you have to identify the particular id to this job and uh, you pass in the job service to as a parameter uh, which you have from the component name and you build up so you could set different attributes now you could set minimal latency uh, to the job interval that's the time that's the meaning of the of that you could override the deadline probably uh probably you want to actually make this work at the point of the time the deadline that states you pass in the job interval you want that to run at that specified interval and you set persisted true true you want that to continue uh, happening you have that true and you build up the job info which is the tax so this tax is what uh, will really uh, demarcate on how the job is actually going to uh, be triggered and how it's going to flow uh, is it going to flow within this interval uh, you do you need to override the deadline does it need Wi-Fi does it need internet service uh, are you going to set it to be persisted and true you know you could actually read more on job scheduler we have other attributes which you could add up at this point in time to the tax and you view that up now it just text if the job scheduler uh, tax is not equals to the result uh, so it, you want to really know if it actually uh, gets triggered or not so that's when you know how oh, it's not equal definitely you've been unable to schedule the cleanup job and if it is definitely there's a success while uh, scheduling the job so with the managed cleanup job you, this is where it's going to actually going to trigger uh, the job and at the same time you just set a uh, periodic interval to the tax now let's see how you're going to actually trigger that method trigger the method right from the on create of the provider uh, where you pass in the manage cleanup job over here so with that job tax get triggered and every one hour uh, the job starts up to check for any completed tax from the content provider and once there's any completed tax it's going to do a delete that and before you know it once you launch your application you notice that completed tax have been wiped out uh, without you even doing any further action to delete so that's what the job could do it could do all the things for you in your application majorly it could even interact with the cloud it could pass in some data from uh, the mobile device to uh, the cloud you could check some of my videos where I've actually uh, uh, worked uh, in details with job scheduler to help in passing 
local data from the SQLite database down to the MySQL server uh, right there on the cloud or in the database anywhere you have it so that's the beauty of the jobs scheduler it could actually help uh, with that you could also even replace the sync adapter framework uh, which actually work in the same uh, kind of uh, style with that uh, we'll be heading to the manifest and in the manifest uh, this is where we are actually going to uh, declare the job service as well and uh, with that we wrap up with this video in the service you register a service uh, where you declare the path to the cleanup job service which is right in the data package and you have to give a permission uh, which is the permission to bind job service uh, very important and exported also true so with this now you've set up that in the metadata of your application which is the manifest and the job service is going to trigger uh, once you start up and you also need to include the receive boot completed uh, that's a permission that you need to give your device anytime it wakes up this is for the alarm manager as well uh, you do have to receive the boot completed but it could actually further uh, reschedule uh, the alarm for you so with this now uh, we've been able to cover this application and uh, we'll be ending it uh, here and I implore you to actually uh, take your time to start from the beginning and to actually get to the last video and this is actually going to be very helpful for you and it's going to help you in other aspects of the application majorly when you're talking with a content provider uh, when you are uh, using the SQLite database uh, when you are going through uh, the job scheduler when you're using an alarm manager to uh, keep up reminding uh, for a particular tax so that's very very uh, useful when you are dealing with background threats uh, when you are also dealing with services and it could actually uh, help you with uh, all other form of application when you're talking about notification uh, how to actually get notification triggered and how to get it completed on click of notification you still have to con communicate with the detail page extract the URI and display the content so with a lot of uh, back and forth uh, you're good to go to actually build another robust application thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this play playlist and I will implore you to uh, get your hands on the source code and build better application bye bye for now